Join us for a full driving review of the Tesla Model S Raven. This so-called Raven upgrade with the new electric motor in the front, interior tweaks, suspension tweaks and so on. We'll tell you all about that. Today we have the Tesla Model S as Long Range Plus, so the model with the highest range. Of course, meanwhile, all with the same battery. Soon also the Platinum model with even more performance. But today here, the Long Range Plus, exterior, interior and the driving experience. Please enjoy it together with us in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go. In the front you can see this close grille design, of course electric vehicle doesn't need so much cooling right there. Sleek and elegant lines, not too much playing around. And here the daytime running light, they are right there. I think they could really score a rather timeless design here, it still works. What's your take? The length is at 4 meters 98, 16 foot 3 or 196 inches. Midnight silver is the color for today. But you can also have some more colors, but overall their choices are somewhat limited. But I think that's also good for the customer because it doesn't take much time to configure any Tesla. That's actually helpful, I think. 19-inch wheels or 21-inch wheels. These are the silver 19-inch wheels and you can alternatively get the 21-inch in black. But here I think a more elegant styling than with the silver wheels. And when you go for the smaller wheels, it's also more comfort. Talking about comfort, the Raven update has brought new air suspension upgrades, so the air suspension is now more comfortable than before. We'll find out more while driving. Overall, a sleek design, beautiful sedan style, dropping line here below the door handles and the door handles, they fold out then on demand, other than that they're hidden right here. What do you think? Still find it beautiful? The rear design is somewhat timeless. You can also see that the wing lip is so to speak, seamlessly formed right here and also with the tail lamps still look modern. It also says dual motor because we have one motor in the front, one in the rear. The front motor has been replaced with a more efficient one that was taken from the Model 3 from the rear there. So that's why even more efficient now and also overall better power update here with the Raven model. That's also why it's called Raven, because this electric motor is called Raven that was developed in the Model 3. As for the performance figures, here with the Long Range Plus model, 3.8 seconds to 1 km an hour or 3.7 seconds to 60 miles an hour. And just the performance model then that's also available is about 1.3 seconds faster. Battery, however, both the same for Long Range Plus and the performance model, 100 kilowatt hours gross or 98 kilowatt hours net and this will deliver some great range figures especially now with this efficiency upgrade and the charging flaps right here hold the rear of the key and then it also opens like this and 11.5 kilowatt ac charging or at the supercharger up to 250 kilowatt dc and maximum range of 650 kilometers or 400 miles when you drive slowly or we test more autobahn speeds and then you can at least still score some 300 miles or some 490 kilometers. Well, the door closing sound is somewhat okay, but you know, here with the frameless doors, always a little tricky. Inside of the doors, all covered with leatherette, good build quality. And then here, the inside, also leatherette seats, so the seats all animal free at Tesla in every single Tesla model in black, white, or beige. These stylings are available today, the black one and is a very clean cockpit setup. That's the cool thing for sure. And here with the matte Brightwood today, 
just the beige interior would have even brighter wood. Getting inside, nice and easy entry. The Model X as SUV has the advantage that it has more upright seating position, where here the Model S more has this lower seating position then. It is somewhat similar to a Model 3 as well, but of course the cockpit layout is also a little bit different. Here I think, do I have more comfort than on the seats of the Model 3? I would say a bit yes, um, but the biggest difference is really to the Model X actually where you have just a little bit more space, have a more elaborated upright seating position then. And then when I put the seat all the way down with one with the A6 or 6.1, a lot of headroom left here with the fixed panoramic glass roof. Interior overview, clean and impressive, straight lines, high grade leather red use, not yet for the steering wheel, it has a heating function. And for the Model S and for the X, it is animal skin, whereas the Model 3 and the Model Y is already also leather red at the steering wheel, so it's the only animal part remaining in this interior here at the steering wheel, but they also want to change it for the future. But here you can also see high grade leather red, leather red and everything feels very nicely, and the build quality has been constantly upgraded as well. Mostly buttonless, steering wheel just with a few controls, so more details to that. 17 inch screen, vertical way is still really impressive. We also go into details of that. As for the styling, here with the black interior, you get a matte wood here. In the performance model, it would be carbon fiber. Then in the white interior, also carbon fiber for the performance model, but a darker wood than for the non performance model. And if you go for the beige styling here, then you would always get both this model and the performance model here a brighter matte wood, which is to me probably the most beautiful solution. I would maybe go blue exterior and then the beige interior with the bright wood. That would be one cool choice definitely, but the other ones, I mean, everything always looks very nice in the interior here. Here in the digital instruments, very clear and easy, everything to read, to speed. The left side, for example, what music is playing at the moment, left lower part for the range. Right side then for the energy consumption. There you can see also how it plays a role if here, I drive rather slowly and can be super efficient, like 12 kilowatt hours in one kilometers, or here, if there's more motorway involved, 23 kilowatt hours in one kilometers, and then of course there's the average. And um, I can also easily put that, and that's also a cool thing about the, the system, to the miles figures. And then you can see here, again, here about 35 kilowatt hours and 100 miles as for the higher motorway consumption. And also here on the right side, when I use my right thumb, I can go through last calls, I can just set the temperature easily, for example, or I can set the fan speed, recent calls, and so on, this really cool. And also with the voice control, activate steering wheel heating. So that's straightforward, works very well. Left side of the steering wheel for the volume, press it to mute or play again, here for the music titles. And the right side then here to control the instrument, like with setting the temperature. That's, you know, when you just start scrolling, then you change the temperature, really practical. Here for the voice input, and that's here to reach the menu to scroll through the other options. The gears you put in here next to the steering wheel or behind it, we know this stock column from Mercedes, put it down to drive, here for P, and this then for reverse. Easy solution, why not? It's really tough to fit this vertical screen in the 16 to 9 camera. This is here the satellite view, of course, really impressive and also quite fast if you compare it to other brands, for example. Then the driving selection here, this is probably most important. You can switch the acceleration modes. We will talk about that, how that differs. Actually, also the steering mode, how much resistance you want in the steering and so on. And um, display choice, for example, also with the brightness and so on, or just the auto brightness. So you can control so many interesting things here. Air suspension has received an update, but you can also put more to comfort or sport, depending on your liking. So many things you can really individualize right here, but the most things will just be fine if you leave them as they are from works. And then do some stuff with voice control, what you want to change, for example. So not that important then. After all, in the lower area, you can change the temperature, but you rather do it um, at the steering wheel, for example, here um, with the right thumb, that's easier. Or once again, with the voice input, this will also work just fine. Change temperature to 24 degrees. There we go. So this goes quite quickly and they're also improving the voice features 
constantly. You can also switch to a more simple map mode, by the way. It's easier to navigate that way. This one here is just more impressive. And here, for example, show the next superchargers or other charging stations. Really straightforward, simple to use. Here again, once again, the model here for the Bluetooth connection. You connect your phone via Bluetooth. So that's actually easy and you also for the last calls, you access it in the instruments and so on. The only thing is, um, you know, to get the playlist is rather, you know, that's all the songs I have on my phone. And it's hard to select the playlist right here. That's where the Apple CarPlay would have an advantage definitely over this. I would like that they implement some playlist, um, you know, feature or something that would, would have been definitely cooler. Camera, you can also access right here manually, and then the consumption, how that switches depending on how you drive. This is very, very interesting. Here, more city driving um, with low average, then more high speed autobahn with a higher average, and so on. That really depends then on the driving. Seat heating can also be controlled in lower area, and so many th more things to show you right here, but these are the most important features. And when you put it in reverse, also the rear view camera appears, but you can also activate it if you like just manually and it has a you know great resolution and all over the screen that's how it's done lower console here again with a nice matte wood and you can slide it open and then here you now you have the cup holders you can also adjust them but that's i think a good setup for two big bulbs for example and then just behind it is then the inductive charging pad for your phone. And as an alternative, you can also use 12 volt power supply or here two USB-C chargers. One then is occupied for the inductive charging pad. And the armrest right here, you can slide it open. And then you have more cup holders, but they're a little bit more shallow. Frameless back mirror, I think it could be a little bit bigger. And then this massive panoramic screen um, it goes all the way around the vehicle. However, you cannot open it. Yeah, and there is this one button left right here and this then for the glove box and this is the car key and today we have it in this rubber case so to speak that you can have this ring around it and attach it to another key other than that it would be you know even looking nicer here without this rubber pad but it's also a practical solution in any case if you double click the front right here you can open the front if you double click the rear you can open the hatch and if you hold the rear, you open the charge port. And of course, there's also the Tesla app available, so you just need your smartphone to enter the vehicle, basically. However, if you have signal, you can do cool stuff. For example, here, change the temperature in advance, and then the car is cool or hot, however you like it, when you arrive. Getting in the rear. And it's a full-size sedan. Um, you sit relatively low here also, and you can see here the angle of my legs not ideal, so the bench could be formed a little bit differently. That you know, there's not too much space right here, so it's not the most comfortable, ideal situation for tall L's in the rear. Legroom is, however, no problem. But again, I think the whole bench could be, yeah, maybe a little bit longer and higher, for example. Headroom, however, is no problem. That very well fits. Again, here the Model X has the advantage because it offers more rear seating comfort as well. But being this good electric platform, I can just slide here to the middle seat. In the middle seat is almost as comfortable to sit, basically. And you know, have no middle tunnel here, so that's really comfortable as for this case. Two USB chargers and then some cup holders here to fold out too. I also fix the outside parts and you can easily fold the seats right here two-third, one-third split, and of course, really impressive, this view through the panoramic roof. Opening in the trunk, for example, it works like this. Double-click here on the key, and then you can open it, and you can source your charging cables right there, either in the front or in the rear, but that's possible. Here, for example, you know, for the normal AC stations, maybe not at the supercharger, or also here with the household plug and so on, but definitely practical to have that here. Trunk area, 28 cubic feet, or 804 liters. Here, this cover, you can also easily remove that, of course. Then the standard length here would be one, one meter 15. And this is a meter now, and that's here in, in width right here. So very well to use. You can see here a cabin trolley also fits easily in, in a vertical way. And underneath here, you can store either charging cables here in the rear 
awesome other stuff so so much space also available and, and also in height so the height here to the cover right here is about 45 centimeters and it's an even deeper when you use this one and also you can even fold the seats from here like this you don't have to go around and then you have uh, absolute total length to the front seats here with almost two meters welcome to thomas's driving lounge tesla model s long range plus still we put it to the standard acceleration mode so they have a little bit more acceleration so and we show you acceleration because even this one, being not the performance model, already this one has so much torque and speed. And we will wait until we can saf safely pass onto the motorway because as soon as I hit this accelerator pedal, everyone else will go nuts. As do we. 20 kilometers an hour, let's go. That's 200 kilometers an hour or 125 miles an hour. Really impressive. Wow. <laughs> that went so quick. So impressive once again. Of course, when you have the performance model in the ludicrous mode, it's absolutely insane. But this one is already so fast. You do not need the performance model to perform a harsh acceleration. This one is way more than enough. And that's also the reason I usually, even here in the non-performance model, put it to the chill acceleration mode because it's just too much for your body to take and you don't have like the, you know, sound resonance. You know, you don't exactly cope with what's happening, you know, so it's just too fast. And if you then think about the upcoming plat model, which is like 2.1 like or seconds or 2 seconds and for the miles to 100 kilometers or 60 miles an hour, this will be out of this world, definitely. But here already, what a strong acceleration and what you also heard. I mean, we were going 200 kilometers an hour and 125 miles an hour and sound insulation wise, it was totally fine. And this is the thing about the Raven update we already experienced at the Model X. Here, one advantage for the Model S, the Model S is even more silent at higher speeds because of the building style. Somehow, you know, the Model X just higher. And this is a really, really cool thing. So the Raven update massively improved the noise insulation at high speeds. So far, we could always say, yeah, you know, Tesla has a great concept and they do this good and this better and this better. But however, the Germans, yeah, more suspension comfort. They're way more silent and high motorway speeds. This is diminishing now bit by bit. So before I was really saying like, okay, long-term driving a Tesla Model S or X with like 140 kilometers on the motorway, 150 kilometers on the motorway, you know, like 80, 90 miles an hour. Yeah, not that pleasant. Or I'll take a Mercedes E-Class for that or so. And now I have to say, no problem. You know, at any time, I would also take this one here for higher motorway speeds now. It's actually no problem. Just with the energy, energy consumption, you know, there's the officially range, an official range here for this one, like 650 kilometers or 400 miles. And you can reach that if you have predominantly slow driving and city driving. However, if you consider standard motorway speeds and keep it at cruise control, it's more, once again, about 20 kilowatt hours on 100 kilometers or 32 kilowatt hours on 100 miles. And here, good steering really precise nice feeling in the steering so it's really you know without any dead zone area here really good and i mean it's not a small vehicle but it still feels light low center of gravity due to the battery pack good concept good building platform of this car and the interior quality has been improved bit by bit here as well and here just a lot of fun suspension upgrade was really nice with an air suspension upgrade difference here to the model 3 definitely here in the model s we do have the air suspension that is definitely more comfortable the suspension is to me at the moment the biggest weakness of the model 3 also great vehicle and definitely better price performance i mean this one is way more expensive 
um, but here the air suspension does bring more comfort and it's a full-size sedan definitely but still does feel light and agile on the road because of the low center of gravity and the great steering and of course this you know very spontaneous driving feeling and you always know here with the electric vehicles when you stand at the traffic light it's no problem we you know not consuming any any energy and then um, not very well like this these start stop functions of the cars and so on here you know accelerating out of the corner even just in the chill mode so great agile what you know just so much fun driving this one what a unique driving experience once again yeah really really awesome so and now one more acceleration where we are already at speed and i just put in the standard acceleration mode again that we can show that properly so when i start at about 85 kilometers let's go That's again 180 kilometers now. Wow, and I mean, this beeping sound, by the way, was again a warning because I was still in the autopilot and then starting the acceleration. So you could also turn it off before. And here, once again, so, you know, the improvement of the noiseization is great, you know. And there are still more silent cars, yes. But here, at 170 kilometers an hour, stable on the road uh, with this weight it has. Also, when I do a lane change at higher speeds, it's really precise. Um, you have to you know pay attention they don't over erect because the steering is very very direct so pay attention to that and when we then go to a more normal motorway speed here like 140 130 kilometers an hour or like, like 90 miles or something that's a really really calming down good noise insulation and most people worldwide won't have these german motorway speeds and then it's really really silent so once again this update for the vehicle so great to have that um, so when I really think about when I drove this vehicle for the first time I was so impressed with the car back then like 2012 I think it was but so much has been done meanwhile that it's really although it's basically the same car and still so you know impressive as the vehicle as it is even more refined right now bit by bit they improved it and that's really really cool to see to see the development of this vehicle so and meanwhile we really have to say that the advantages the German premium manufacturers have that they more and more diminish so that's a tough thing to swallow for the German automotive industry but once again yeah great acceleration noise insulation is now good the air suspension upgrades is that you really feel more comfort at the same time it's not too soft so you can have good lane changes also at higher speeds that's well done and also easier to control this car here now that's a good thing you know we compare it with model 3 i like to be able to change the temperature just here with the right thumb and the steering wheel at the middle model 3 it's probably that you would even more use the um, you know the voice control that would be a thing but also the voice control they can improve it bit by bit by the software have another over the air update and then you find just once again that's also one thing again so just you know before i did this review some things were updated and you always think like, oh that's exciting so what's new today you know so that's coming bit by bit once again what do you guys think here about our performance driving with the model s even not performance model but this one already with a lot of performance Well, what about some normal city driving? This Raven update, we've seen the performance and we also probably talked about the efficiency and even more efficiency when driving here in the city that you can really score these 400 miles or 650 kilometers. That's again not possible with higher speed motorway driving, but rather just when driving low speed. And the good thing about the electric vehicles is really it doesn't matter when you have stop and go traffic because you can always use the recuperation and as long as you don't accelerate harshly you can really score very very decent energy consumption figures and really high range even when city traffic whereas with combustion engine models city traffic is just deadly for a good consumption definitely very interesting here again also in the normal traffic the steering wheel has a good feeling it's direct it's very precise easy to steer and in the you know driving commands here you can also set it 
standard comfort. Comfort would be a little bit softer and easier to steer, but to me, there needs to be some more resistance that it feels better. And if you want more resistance, then you have sport, and then you have more to steer, <laughs> let's take it that way. But I think the standard mode is actually quite good. And I also leave it with the regenerative braking as standard because when I then lift the throttle, I can easily reach the next lower speed limit and I can really use this one pedal driving. So I hardly ever use the real brakes. And when you just want to roll, you stay on the throttle just a little bit. Well, there's a white <laughs> Model 3 in the front yard there. Acceleration I usually also leave at chill because I mean, even in the chill mode, which is then electronically reduced, this is more than enough. This car always has so much power and instant torque, so you're actually happier than driving it in the chill mode. And that's also my saying that the performance model is good for showing off, but when you think about in terms of everyday driving comfort, this is the model as to go for just the, you know, the long range plus. You have the best range possible you already have so much performance more than you could ever possibly need and we also have the 19 inch wheels mounted on this one here and this together with the new updated air suspension is the best comfort we've had in the model S so far so stick with 19 inch wheels save the money enjoy more comfort they already look good in 19 inch no doubt about that and it's really important that you have more dampening comfort also from the tires and this air suspension update for the Raven models, Model S and Model X, really does a good job. So the air suspension is really more comfortable now. It's also more silent on the interior as for possible rattling sounds from somewhere. And we really realize that step by step over time, they increased and increased and increased the build quality of Tesla Model S and Tesla Model X. The same will also happen here to the Model 3. So we really see this progress and that that's really a very positive thing because we always talked about that, that they started with the right concept, making the car as sustainable as possible. Almost animal free and now for the Model 3 and Model Y, animal free. Electric building platform. And then, yeah, build quality was not right there, but then you can fix it, fix it. You know, you can really work with that if you have the right concept to build on that. That's exactly what we've especially seen. We've been following the Model S especially since the initial launch and that's from the producing of this video, like about 10 years ago, almost. <laughs> um, not quite, but almost, you know? So just to give you, an, it still flabbergasts me. Um, I mean, this is essentially a very old car. But it could come on the market today and people would think, still think, this is so modern, it's a concept vehicle and you still feel it while driving. It's such a unique driving experience and you feel, I would say you feel somewhat relieved always when you drive this vehicle because yes, you can do so much with the screen also while driving, it is distracting. Yet again, if you want to control the temperature, use the turning wheel here, you know, just with your right thumb or use the, the voice control, set temperature to 23 degrees. And here we go, and that's it. And, you know, or for example, to activate or deactivate the steering wheel heating. You can also do that with the voice control, it's no problem. So they also increase or improve the voice control. That also helps big time to use all of the commands here. So although this is one of the examples of there are hardly any buttons left for a car, it's probably the car together with Model X where you have the least feeling that the buttons are missing, you know? And that's different with the German premium manufacturers where they also reduce and reduce and reduce the buttons and you really get the feeling like, oh, come on, why can't we keep them? I really need it. But here they really try to simplify it as much as possible. And that's why, I mean, suspension wise, it's already good and better now with the Raven update. But let's say like a typical Mercedes air suspension is still a better air suspension, yes. However, you still feel somewhat calmer and more relieved in this vehicle because of this calm design and you know the whole styling of the interior of the vehicle. And that's a very, very interesting thing. So 
can just stress again how much I enjoy driving this one here. And again, as for the energy consumption, yeah, this motorway driving about 20 kilowatt hours on one kilometers or 32 kilowatt hours on 100 miles, that again rather stands for 300 miles of range and all the efficiency updates with the new front electric motor with the Raven update, you rather can enjoy than when you drive a little bit slower than even more efficiency comes into play. Of course, Germany is always with, you know, combined with a lot of motorway driving and that's why I also, you know, also as a comparison to the combustion engine models, focus a little bit more on the motorway driving also when measuring these um, you know, consumption figures. Cruise control set here with the column left next to the steering wheel and you can enjoy a normal cruise control. You can also activate a lane departure assist. So without activating the so-called autopilot, which is an you know, active lane keeping assist, you already have it somewhat, um, but just when you're getting close to the lane or so. And then when you have it activated here, you can also with a double pull, you can activate the autopilot and Let's just see how it performs in the construction lane. And at the moment, I'm not actively steering. I'm really letting the car do its job. And so far, I mean, you feel that it's interfering, but so far quite smooth. It's nice. And I mean, this is always a good test here in our construction side, because this is not a typical um, wide line ordered situation. So this is, a more fierce test definitely for these assistance systems and so far it's doing a really really good job. Mm, when I've been driving the Model X for a longer time I realized that we had a lot of false negatives so sometimes when you know the autopilot was suggesting me something and it wasn't like that correct maybe like did reduce the speed suddenly although there was nothing for example so um, at this point, I don't think they do have the best system. However, you could argue that they have, again, here a great potential because they are using this cloud intelligence, because they're constantly updating their systems because they're learning from the situations that happen. So here again, interesting base concept, which could have more potential, you know? That's, that's once again the thing about Tesla. That's also the reason why on the Nah, that I'm doing myself right. <laughs> so and now you're on the normal motorway where you have the two wide lines. That's an, and of course really easy. Um, about the blind spot monitor, so the thing is here, we don't have one built in the side mirrors and that's really a pity and it's missing. However, if I set the turning indicator here, also no warning. The thing is, the only lane departure warning I have is this chime. So um, when I try to, yeah, so I, I was turning the steering wheel and then there was this warning sound appearing. That's good to have definitely and I really appreciate that it's there. I just think that it would be more helpful or even more helpful if there would also be, as we know from other vehicles, like this visual warning in the side mirror. That's definitely a missing thing, but at least we have this warning and you just have to, you know, when you come from another, another vehicle, you have to switch it in your mind somehow and say like, okay, I, I don't have this visual help available. Um, I just know like when this sound appears and I'm just about to steer to the left and the right and change the lane. And, and then in this moment, this sound appears, don't think about anything else, just steer back. You have to save that, you know, somehow in your brain. And then it's actually also a system that will also work, but definitely a visual thing would help here the same as everyone is still, you know, waiting for a head-up display. But then again, yeah, overall, what an impressive driving experience once again. And now the conclusion of the Tesla Model S in the current status here with the recent Raven upgrade long range plus model. I think this is also the model S to go for. It already has more than enough performance. The performance model, I mean, with the bigger wheels and even more performance, it will be less comfortable, so to speak. But in any case, with the Raven upgrade, with the suspension upgrades and also the better noise installation, it's way more comfortable than before. You can easily also drive it with higher speeds at Autobahn and so on, on the motorway. So this, you know, 
evens out this distance it had in some areas to the German premium manufacturers. Still a very likable timeless styling for sure and yeah just the highest range we have at the moment on the market and of course when you drive higher speed motorway it will go down but still you can if you like reach the 400 miles or 650 kilometers of uh, of this range but then again if you drive more motorway as i said earlier more towards 300 miles and about 500 kilometers but that's still a lot definitely to me, most important upgrade indeed, the noise installation, that's really cool. And also the interior has become even more refined. Very well usable, a lot of space on the interior and just a unique driving concept and also the unique interior concept. So I think at this size here in the full size sedan market, still one of the best choices there is. And of course also their very consistent strategy not to use animal skin on the seats beginning from 2017. In summer 2017 they changed it all and the Model Y and the Model 3, they are both completely animal free. Here with the S and the X still have the issue with the steering wheel because there's also the heated steering wheel offering but that has also been worked on. So the manufacturer that is most consistent in the sustainability approach and the next step of course would be to reduce even some critical materials for the battery use but I mean they already have cut the lithium use in half for the battery cells so also progress in this respect so once again although it's not the newest car it still somehow feels new especially with the most recent upgrade and you know there's also the performance model we have a review of that too even more speed even better acceleration really impressive and there will be the plat model which is going absolutely crazy for the acceleration it will have a second rear electric motor than overall three motors and when this is out of course we will serve you with a full review see you there